Hi there, this is Unmesh and today I'm going to share with you one click to make your actions so much more better and versatile in Photoshop. Also along the way, we're going to be sharing some tips and tricks that might help you. Now, I have no intention to waste your time. We're going to be talking about this click. So if you already know about this, you don't have to watch the video. But if you don't or you have nothing better to do, stay tuned. So before we begin, let me ask you one question. What is a good action? A good action has two properties. Number one, it is versatile. It means that it will work on most images, if not all, no matter what the type or the resolution is. Second property is that a good action should be customizable. You should be able to customize the values both during the process of the application of the action and also after the action has been applied. So let's go ahead and create an action which follows both of these criteria. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. So first off, let's go to Windows and then Actions to open up the Actions panel. Now inside of that, let's create a new set. Click on this folder icon and we're going to name this set Pix Effects. All right. And then just hit OK. Now inside of that set, let's create a painterly effect action for this example. So we're going to zoom in quite a bit and click on the new action button. Okay. And let's name it painterly and it's going to be inside Pix effects and click record. Now Photoshop starts acting like a tape recorder. Everything we do inside of Photoshop will be recorded. Okay. So first off to do that, press control or command J. We're going to make a copy of the background layer or whatever layer is selected. Okay. And we're going to convert this into a smart object. We can also rename it if you want to. So let's rename it softening. Okay. So we have renamed it and go to filter, convert for smart filters. This converts this into a smart object. You can also do right click and convert to smart object. It does the exact same thing. Now to apply the softening effect, we're going to choose a unique filter that's used for something else, but we can use here as well. And that is filter noise and then reduce noise. Click on that and make sure the strength is 10, preserve details and all of these is a zero. Okay. Hit OK. Now have a look at the softness. So this is the before, this is the after. Look at the softness. If you click on that arrow, it will show you that reduce noise was added. Now we want more softness. Go to filter, click on reduce noise again. Same values. Hit OK. Let's do it four times because an image with a higher resolution might need more. And if you have an image with a lower resolution, you can turn the extras off later after applying the action. So that's customizable. Filter, reduce noise one more time, hit OK. Look at how painterly this is. Let's do it one more time. Now for this image, because this is not so big, this is just 3000 by 2002 pixels. We might not need four times, but let's do it. Now after that, we make a copy of the existing layer. Press Ctrl or Command J. Okay. And we name it sharpening. We could have made two copies before, but it really doesn't matter. And we're going to delete all the smart filters. Okay. Now let's apply high pass to it. Go to filter, other, and then high pass. Now inside of high pass, now this is crucial for every image. The value is going to be different. So first of all, let's decrease it to 0 0.1 and then gradually increase it and stop at the point where you begin to see the details and we don't want any halos. If we go too much, you begin to see halos around the edge. See the halos? We don't want, we just want just, we just want the details. Okay. Just a little bit of it. That's okay. It's fine. 0.5 or let's go 1.1 for this one. It okay. It looks pretty good. Now this layer also has some colors and if you change the blend mode to overlay, that color is going to show up around the edge. We don't want that. So let's desaturate it by going to image, adjustments, and then hue saturation. And just decrease the saturation. You can do it in a variety of ways. This is just one of the ways. And change the blend mode of this one to overlay. Okay. Now have a look at it. We have the details here. If I turn it off and on, it will show you the details, but we don't want to do anything right now. You want to make a copy of sharpening. Press Ctrl or Command J to double up the sharpening. And then we can name it sharpening 2. It all looks fine now. Okay, just click on stop. Now, we have created a wonderful action. 
let's delete everything and let's apply this and it will make sense to you later. So we are back to square one and let's just collapse it. And if we play this painterly, it will apply the painterly effect to our image. Now it's time for us to test the action. So with the background layer selected and the painterly selected, just play it. It's going to take a while because it uses smart objects and it's totally customizable. So it has given the image the painterly feel. So here's the before. Here's the after. Now this action partially fulfills the criteria of a good action. Yes, it is customizable after creating the action, but it's not customizable during the process. Let's have a look at this. We don't want so much softness. So if we open the softening by the arrow and if I turn just one of them off, it looks perfectly fine for me. Now, if I was applying this to some other image, we might need some other value of high pass. So we will have to go there and double click on the high pass, hit OK, and then change the value again and change the value on the second one as well. That can be pathetic. So instead of doing that, here's what we do. Let's go ahead and delete this. All we have to do, just open up the action, locate where high pass is the first instance and just click on this box. Okay, there's this box right next to it, click on that box. So the next time when you play that action, have a look at this, this was the one click, okay? So when you play the action, and when it comes to applying the high pass, a dialog box will show up. See, it asks you, what the value of high pass do you want? For every image of different resolution and type, the value is gonna be different. So it's great that this shows up while the action is being applied. So. We can control the value to whatever we want. For this image, 1.1 was fine. And I'm gonna hit okay. For a change, let's go ahead and apply 1.5, okay? Hit okay. Now you will see that even if you open the sharpening too, it has the same value of 1.5. Similarly, sharpening has the same value of 1.5. So cool, isn't it? Now, this is important because, let's go ahead and delete all of this. If I double the size up, if I go to image and then image size, if I say, let's go 6,000, okay. we double the size, hit okay. All right, now when you play this, the values would be different. We might need four of those reduced noises this time. So it's gonna apply all of that and make some changes. Now, the interesting thing is when the high pass will show up. See, the high pass shows up and 1.1 value is barely showing any details. We might need 2.2, just the double of this, okay? Hit okay. Have a look, amazing. So it just makes your action so much more versatile because now you can apply it in any image of any resolution. So that was just one click, one click on the side, of any property. So if it's high pass, high pass. If it's hue saturation, just click here if you want the dialog box for hue saturation to show up. So any parameter where you want your action to stop at and give you the ability to change the values, just click on that box beside that parameter and you're good to go. So that was the one click to make your actions more versatile and customizable. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next fun till then. Stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.